package, where's the money? Incredibly disappointing news. When I was trying to save this file, um, I got some error messages, and it turns out that at precisely this point in the proceedings, my camera just magically glitched. Um, so my face just freezes like that, and it's static for the entire next like hour because of the reaction and then a full view. None of it was recorded. I've got a sense of humour about it now. I did not have a sense of humour about it when I discovered it. So I undenied about what to do, uh, whether to just stop it here and go to a review or whatever, but I think I would really like to watch this episode with you. So I'm going to pick up the episode now, watch the rest and do another review at the end. I'm so sorry this happened. It's incredibly annoying. And I didn't want to tell you at the beginning of this reaction or before releasing it because I wanted you guys to, to watch that first reaction intact without kind of any baggage associated with it. So without further ado, let's have at it. I can't believe she's got out of this. I kept expecting her to float off. They were stitched up like kickers for this. We were all supposed to be dead. That was the plan from the start. Whose mm. plan? Not Beltran's. They killed him too. There was stealth tech in those containers. The Belters must have had help from someone high up enough on the food chain to get through restricted military space. We need to get off planet. I have a cousin on Ceres. We can go there until things cool off. You should go then. I've got other plans. What are you gonna do? Take on the entire fucking military by yourself? Not by myself. Good luck. Wait. I'm sorry I got you into all this. Don't be. At least now I've got something to do. I love that. I really do. This is incredible. So much of that stealth tech was hidden by like the ocean and other stuff. Do I say stealth tech? Oh yes! I went pretty from molecule technology. I think we're gonna have to add exo-archaeologists to your resume. Damn right. I want to understand what really happened. The war between those two ancient species. If there's one thing geologists are good at doing, it's seeking for answers. I'll watch your back. I'm gonna 
convince the UN to give you all the resources you need. You really believe the artifact is still a danger to us? I went inside it. I'm still here. I think we should do whatever we can. Make sure we're not the second galaxy-spanning civilization it wipes out. Galaxy-spanning? We are now. I hear Tycho is beautiful. I'm excited to see it. GK, you take care of them. They're your family now, too. I can't visit you in space. <laughs> you do that. All of you. Goodbye. 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 We love you. I don't see... Pause. Just love that scene so much. I love that that little kid got adopted. That was lush. Um, and also just that moment with Alex there at the end where he's... I think multiple things are happening. I think he's identifying um, with Celsia because in... I mean, he, he and her actually have a lot in common that she... She does love her family, but she really doesn't want to be with them. She wants to be away doing doing this stuff. So he knows that. But I think he's also going to really miss Lucia. I think they could have been something in, a, in an alternative kind of universe where she wasn't married and she didn't have those commitments. And I just think he's, he's realising really he's never going to go back to his family. That really is over. And I thought it's just such a beautiful scene. Anyway... Play. Anything else down there? That's all of it. It would be nice to get rid of the pro molecule for good. Bye. Last thing I said to Miller is that rain doesn't taste like anything. What would you say if you had another chance? You were right about everything. You warned us. We're charging through the doors anyway. If we have any chance at surviving what comes next, it'll be because of you. Rest in peace, brother. Test it out right now. Oh, damn right you are. Twice. Twice they've done this to us. God, I think I cry all over again. Fred? A long time ago we made a bargain. I upheld my end. I need you to help me find someone. His name is Philip Inaros. He's my son. I have to find him before his father gets him killed. Oh, God. <laughs> the suspense is killing me. Merry Christmas. You are held up? Tendon's finally finished growing, and why do you care? I don't want to beat the shit out of you if you're gimpy. We're fighting, are we? You made me kill Way. I liked Way. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> Pause. I really, really hope that is Murtry dead at that point. He needs to be dead. It ain't on that way he died and he gets to live. So in my little world, Amos beats the shit, living shit out of him to the point that he literally beats him to death. It's the only thing I'm interested in. 
Um, and I love that like look of absolute killer rage on Amos's face in that moment. And you see the reaction from Mertry is like, oh shit, this is not a guy who's just a bit pissed or he's going to give me a few licks. Yeah. Like, Your faith in my vision, in our shared vision, is going to change the arc of our species. I intend to dedicate my first term to fully opening the ring gates for exploration and for colonization. Yeah! I've been summoned to Luna. Summoned? She won. She gets to set the agenda. It might be better if I stayed. I have a new semester to prepare for, and I think we both need time to adjust. You're angry with me. No. I just feel that, um... Come with me. Please. It's over. You should go alone. Pause. I just gotta say at this point, and I'm sorry to Michael Benyam, but how amazing would it have been, this scene? How poignant would this scene have been with the original Arjun. I know for a fact I would have been bawling my eyes out at this point, even if it was the 10th time I'd watched it, I'd still be crying. But all I kind of feel here is, thank God we're not gonna have any more scenes of them together, because poor Shari Adashu has had to carry their scenes really. I think, and I think part of it is that that actor is he's just really miscast. Because when he was allowed to be aggressive, when we saw him um, in previous episodes, you know, use the death of our son to score political points, that was the one time in this whole season I actually connected with Arjun. And so I think that it is actually that that actor is better, is just more masculine, is more forceful than previous Arjun. And I actually think he's doing really, it's, he's clearly self-conscious and unable to produce the sort of um, gentleness that Brian George gave as Arjun. And so he just kind of, at times he just looks like he's been a bit camp or a bit glib, um, which actually shows how hard it is to do what Brian George does and makes it look so effortless and natural. So that's all I'm going to say about that. I'm, I'm just, g g bye, play. Nancy? By the time you see this, you will be Secretary General. This will be your chair. It won't be easy for you either. It won't be simple. And I'll be rooting for you. If there is anything I can offer that will help, any wisdom I can pass on, it is this. This chair is not a throne. We're not queens. The work we do here is critical. But it is not all that we are. Your time will end too, and you will want a life to return to once this is done. As for policy, and the direction you're taking Earth, and all her peoples, well, we disagree. One of us is wrong. I think it's you. <laughs> but I hope it's me. Good luck. Our future is in your hands now. That is premium Avasarala right there. I love you, girl. I will always love you, however much we disagree. Oh, man. You put it! Man. <laughs> I know we didn't leave on the best terms, but you're the only one I can trust to tell. There's something rotten on Mars, within the military, some kind of weapon trafficking with bouncers. Assuming your offer to work together is still open, I accept. I think we need each other. Yeah, you do. Bobby, your timing sucks. <laughs> Just when I was getting up, they pulled me back in. Under 
attack. Prepare to repel borders. This is fucking amazing. Ashford, I love you. Damn it. This is Clay's Ashford. Traitor to the bell. This is Philip. My son. Fucking hate you. Nothing we do now. I'm not even going to try to convince me to spare your life. He's done. Why would I waste the last few precious moments I have? Dang it! I am so mad right now! You do know, Marco, that throwing rocks at Tycho Aceres will do little to harm the Inners. I agree. <laughs> the only real victims there would be Belters. Those days are over now. still don't see it. I don't see what? Can't even imagine it. This has always been a problem for our kind. Even our dreams are small. Die in darkness, but up now. You are a badass. You are a badass, Ashford. The execution dock. I have come to go. I was sick and nigh to death, but I vowed with my every breath. For go with wisdom. Yes. Oh, you fuckers. Oh, a mess all over again. I thought that was absolutely exceptional. The twist with that, where we were, we were thinking this was about Tycho and Ceres, and that. Inaros was just going to sacrifice a whole bunch of their lives to, you know, get some sort of symbolic victory. And the whole time, right from the beginning, we had clues from him. The first scenes we saw him in, what his plan was, 
it was to use the Martian technology to the stealth technology on the asteroids so that Earth wouldn't see them coming, so that he's actually launching a military attack on Earth. And one they're never going to see coming in a million years. And when they do, they're going to think it's Mars. Is that going to trigger a war? There is a whole world of pain coming right now. You know, with the, with the one Martian missile that we had before. How many people did we lose? Like two million people in South America. And there was like, what, two or three um, asteroids now that are heading directly for the earth it just dread to think what the impact of that is going to be and then what's the impact of that going to be on the ring gate stuff because then you know is that going to is that really going to render earth uninhabitable at that point because earth is already you know un under resourced for the amount of people that are living on it and if we're about to it just depends where those asteroids hit but it's going to be this is going to be a crisis of literally global proportions on earth and I'm at least relieved that we know Ashford got his message out, but we don't know who that went to. I'm thinking Drummer makes is the most logical person that he that he would contact in that moment. Oh, I'm gonna go again because it's just. Oh. We've seen Ashford sing that song, and we've seen him with Drummer. That was the song he was singing because he thought he was gonna die then. Um, we saw him singing it with his daughter. And I'm just, I'm really, I'm really happy. I feel a bit like I did when Miller um, crashed into Venus, you know, in the, in Eros. Because it was like, this is awful, but it's also exactly the way that this character would want to go out. And so I'm really glad that Ashford got to go out with the, the significant death that I think he would have wanted. And it wasn't for nothing. He that message could save billions of lives because it could eventually stop a war between Earth and Mars, and you know ultimately be the undoing of Marco and Aros, which is amazing. Uh, the casting for Philip there was just extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary casting. He absolutely could be the son of um of the, the people playing Marco and um and Naomi and of course the other finishing piece we saw there was that Vassarella has lost the election which I think we all saw come in and that means the ring gates are going to be opened if the ring gates work because obviously we don't know what the impact of the stuff on Illus is going to be on those ring gates um how they're going to respond and that's quite a scary thought considering now Gao is going to be you know leading earth off up into the, the ring gates potentially for something really bad to happen because of what has taken place on Illus. and just before we go there we should say thank fucking christ we're not going to get team abc but we could get team a b d oh we abc c for camina so we've got now Avasarala going to be connecting with Bobby and I'm just going to be really interested to see where Drummer fits into this. It would make it would make sense for Drummer to head to the Rosie to be with Naomi um, and then they would have a part in bringing Earth and Mars together and you know finding out what has happened because I actually think the asteroids will hit Earth. I think that's going to happen. I think Nancy Gow is in for a hell of a ride as the secretary general because i think all shit is about to break loose next season we're going to have the asteroids we're going to have what's happening with the ring gates we're going to have all of the fallout and the stuff with illus was really fascinating hopefully murtry is dead way is dead but what we had there ultimately was there was this um there was an old piece of weaponry from i guess not the creators but the other side um and Miller couldn't see it, but he could. He knew something was there based on what was happening. And so what he did was connected to everything on the planet of Illus, all of the proto-molecule architecture, artifacts, everything. 
and then jumped into that thing, which effectively killed, it was like the kill switch for the entire planet, um, which meant everything went back to working as usual and everything proto molecule related is over, including Miller. So Miller f is gone. Um, I love the symmetry of the arc of Proto Miller and the arc of Miller, even with the crashing into the sun at, at the end of it. It was always going to end that way. Um, I just, I thought it was beautiful and it just reduced me to, you know, tears because it was like living that moment all over again. But this time it really is. Um, I'm not, I can't imagine him coming back. Um, but I loved all of the stuff with him and LV was just fantastic. And, you know, her going through this learning curve of, of curiosity and then meets reality. And then she was pushed well past her limits. But she did it. She did everything that she needed to do. She saved the world. Um, just well done, LV. That was that was absolutely amazing. She nailed it. I love her character, and I love that she's getting with the Doctor as well. Um, I think I ship them completely. I think they're going to be really happy together, living out on Illus. So I think we have a lot set up for season five. I was going to say season two then. We have an awful lot set up for season five by this season. Um, not least who in Martian Command has been facilitating the relationship with Marco and Oros. Because we are now have a situation where Mars is attacking Earth through, effectively, a proxy through the OPA. So, you know, even if we can calm things down with the Marco recordings, ultimately someone, authorised or not, within the Martian High Command is, is facilitating this. And that's, you know, we've heard that referred to several times. But the thing that really had me suspicious in this episode was the terrorist attack. It was the death of Beltran. Um, and it was carefully listening to the conversation that happened between Bobby and a haircut about you know Beltran not having the relevant permissions to to make to, you know to access the things that he was allowing them to access. So Bobby goes and starts looking at the personnel files of the team he's in to figure out who could it be in the team that Beltran is working that is basically supplying Beltran with those codes. And the people he sees with the he looks into a couple of people and the, the ones to know are Freeman and Norris because those two have relatively low ranks you know a private which Freeman is a private which is a, a lower rank than sergeant and basically private and sergeant are both non-commissioned officers they're both enlist enlistment ranks so why would a private have the security clearance that Freeman does and even higher is is Norris, which okay, she's commit. She is a commissioned officer. She's um, a lieutenant, but her security clearance is like basically anything. And there were like loads and loads of other. Um, there were multiple ranks above a, a lieutenant, which you'd expect to have a greater security clearance than her. So it's really that's confusing. Um, Norris is also in the Proto Molecule Working Group. So is that a code? I feel like it may or may not be related to proto molecule at this at this stage, and I think that would be a good red herring. So that we're focusing on reading proto molecule working group rather than putting together these other pieces of information that are in the background. All that said, it could have just been a throwaway thing, and I'm I'm reaching. But it did that. I would like to get some answers on that next time. We have Naomi searching for Philip. Um, that's going to be next season. I think we're, that's going to be a very interesting and painful journey because clearly Philip absolutely adores his father, um, has been completely socialised into that world. Lord only knows what Marco has told him about Naomi. And to be honest, I think at this stage he could have actually told Philip the truth. And because Philip is so into the ideology, I think he would form the same opinions about Naomi's actions that his father has. So I don't think Marco would even necessarily need to lie, but simply the way that he would frame it inside of their struggle 
Naomi would effectively be, you know, a coward and a deserter. So it's going to be really painful, I think, to see Naomi try and reach out to Philip and him not actually want that. Maybe ever. I would like to think that he's salvageable ultimately, but I think it's this isn't going to be quick. I think this is going to be a long and, and painful road for them. So thank goodness she's got Jim with her. Jim, who has done some serious growth this season, I think, again, by making a lot of mistakes. I feel like Jim and Bobby have been on very similar journeys with regards to their morality and their moral code. Basically, both of them have been put in situations where by enforcing their moral code rigidly, by following the rules, they've ended up actually doing not the most moral thing. And they have both learned over time that occasionally the moral thing to do is to break the rules because the rules themselves in this situation are immoral. So, and in that way, they've actually become more moral as, as characters. You know, an example of Jim with this was the way that he responded to Naomi over Lucia and that, you know, old Jim would have said it's awful, but this, she did the crime, she must pay the punishment, you know, and it all balances out. But what he did here was completely different. He knew, he knows now that the authorities are not any better than anyone else. You know, this is all, a lot of this is optics and performative. And, you know, the universe won't be restored by Lucia going to jail. Her family will be broken permanently. She will be broken permanently. What is the fucking point when she's clearly a decent person and she didn't intend to kill people? And I just love that, that we had, you know, a Jim not be black and white. But, like, Naomi didn't even, like, argue with him or pressure him into that. She just was honest about it. She thought it's, you know, was rubbish. And, and he did that on his own. It was amazing. So I'm also really enjoying that, the way that our characters are growing and moving. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how Abbasarala will be next season. You know, what she learned this season to make her more powerful and not lose next time. Because I think ultimately that's where Abbasarala will go. Is she will learn from this and she won't be caught out the same way twice. I think those are like the key plot things. I think I just finish off by saying I loved this season. I really, really did. I loved that it slowed down. You know, in the reason season three was so powerful was because of what happened in season one and two. We built everything up and I am just so relieved actually to see, especially with the change, you know, with the move into Amazon Prime, probably picking up new fans, um, all of that stuff. The pressure to have made this season louder and faster and bigger in every way in season three must have been enormous and I'm just so relieved to see that they are actually sticking with the format and the the style of storytelling that made season three so important so the chances are we will get another season three we will get that opportunity to be completely twisted about in all sorts of ways that we were in season three but in a new story that we care about as much as we did what was happening at, at that point. Um, and I think for me that the reason for that relief was from the Game of Thrones experience, um, from a show that decided to abandon, you know, all of the intricate character development and plot work and just started essentially kind of being a show where characters were just moving at the most economic points to reach these set pieces. It became all about the set pieces. And I really don't want the expanse to go that way. The expanse is just, and and what this season shows me is I don't think the expanse is going to go that way. Not with these people in charge of it, because I think if it was going to do it, we'd have seen the signs in this season. And what we've got is actually an incredible season where we've had extraordinary set pieces. You know, just absolutely incredible. You know natural and man-made disasters and occurrences that have taken place huge plot twists major moments of character development tragic deaths we've had it all but it's been it's all felt as a natural result of the decisions that the characters we know would make um inside a world that remains believable because it follows its own laws and that is so incredible to me i love it i'm proud of them 
I'm proud to be a fan of this show and I'm so excited for where they're going to take this in season five and six because I feel like so much building work has taken place this season and I and it has ended on an absolute cliffhanger. It's clearly indicating season five is going to blow our tits off. So I I love the I love the drama of this season. I love the human story of it. I loved the morality tales. I loved the effect, I thought the special effects and cinematography reached a whole other level. Um, standout acting performances. I feel like the woman playing Doctor Lv Okoye was phenomenal from beginning to end. I feel like she was for science what Pastor Anna was for religion in season three that you had a really fair representation of a scientist. Um, and that was wonderful to, to see. I really love that. Um, credit also to um, Shari Dashley for carrying her scenes. Um, she had a lot of work to do this season. I don't think it was her best performance because she was carrying some strain and burden, but I think she should be acknowledged for how much work she had to do to enliven her elements of the, of the storytelling when she was paired with an actor that she just did not have chemistry with at all. Very difficult to do because she really did have to generate those performances rather than react, you know, in combination with, with a fellow actor. So kudos to her. Um, oh God, David Strathairn as, as Ashford. That character will live with me for ever i will never forget ashford i will never forget his storylines and i will never forget his death that was so extraordinarily powerful as a scene it's moved me i've seen that scene now like four times and i am in bits every single time in fact you're probably lucky you didn't see me react to it actually the first time because i literally just sat and cried for 10 minutes i had to pause it and then I just sat there and bawled. I just had to let myself bawl because I just could not stop crying at all. So I was like, great, I'm now gonna have to sit here and stop crying before I can even get back to the action. So I didn't even go and watch that last little bit <laughs> of anything until I'd watched that. And then I completely like really didn't get what was going on for a minute because I was so, I was still just stuck in the scene before. <sighs> but man, just that. Another thing I love about the show when they get an actor, you know, they get decent actors in the show and they really use them, and they did there. That is a, that is an A tier quality actor they've got um, playing Ashford, and they used him to to the maximum, and I will miss him very very much. Didn't want that to happen, and it did. And also, I would say Wes Chatham as Amos. I feel like the journey we went on with Amos this season was phenomenal you know the drip 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 of his backstory you know just one line one line every now and then across four seasons and we are just getting this horrific picture you know someone could, could probably have spoken to me for 10 minutes about what had happened to him and it wouldn't have hit me as hard as like the one or two lines that Wes Chatham delivered this season you know about the idea of being in that basement and you just know that, you know, Amos was suffered and the the range on West Chatham, you know, one minute I'm in fits of the giggles and the next minute he's got me crying. And it's just his ability to be both, to, you know, you look at the difference between how terrifying he was in those moments before you knew he was going to beat the ever living shit out of um, Murtry. And then you look at him like sitting talking to Wei and you know not able to give up his torch and those you know those moments and he looks like five years old he does look five you know he just you see this little boy in his face it's just enormously powerful so those would be for me the standout performances of, of this season but as usual everyone acted their socks off I'm not looking forward to seeing drummer <laughs> find out what happened to Ashford next season but fuck me I want Inaros to die in the most horrific way. I don't think he's going to go anytime soon. I think Inaros is the baddie for this 
next trilogy you know so four or three till six potentially but yeah we're gonna have a bit of beef me and him because he has just killed you know one of my favorite characters in this show period so he's on my shit list right now but what an actor though what an actor so for all of those reasons i feel like this is a standout season not only in itself you know the stuff that happened down on illus the western themes you know even even jim's final showdown with mercury being a jewel you know it's just the whole it's just been fantastic um and to do something like that which is so stylistic and not draw me out of the drama you know keep everything consistent i think is also an extraordinary achievement so well done everybody at the expanse for that and just thank you to everyone who's come on this expanse journey with me i can reveal now the next two shows i will be reacting to imminently will be the completion of my handmaid's tale journey that will be patreon only um that's just a time issue i've not got time to do the youtube edits for for the handmaid's tale and i'm never going to finish it if i don't get on with it so handmaid's tale is going to be on patreon only and we also will be doing reactions to Battlestar Galactica. That has won the poll of my patrons for being the next show that I react to. So that is what I will be doing. I'm so excited. I've never even seen a single episode of Battlestar Galactica. Not one, not half an episode, not 10 minutes of an episode. So I am walking into that blind. Um, that's just basically, I think, because of the time it was originally airing. I think I'd have been potentially at university or, so, or something so i just wasn't watching much telly at that at that time at all um my only references to battlestar galactica come from the office because dwight Schrute in the office is a major battlestar galactica fan like that that's my reference to battlestar galactica um i really hope lots of you stay around for that journey um i cannot wait i i think this is going to be incredible but for those of you that don't come along for the journey, thank you for coming along on this one. I can reveal now this has been and will continue, hopefully, to be my favourite reactor journey so far. And we have had some treats. We have watched some extraordinary shows together. But this one so far now has gone into pole position as my favourite reactor journey. Um, for many many reasons but principal among those reasons is the expanse community being able to react to a show which people feel so passionately about um, that they would save it when it was cancelled has really been a trip um, your comments have been extraordinary and just the tone of everything i don't think there is bit i think there's been like one fallout amongst um people this whole journey and that just, you know, is so rare because so often with other stuff, you, you've got to do quite a lot of blocking, quite a lot of um, kind of getting rid of trolls and that kind of stuff. Like Game of Thrones was a nightmare for that. But this, I barely have to moderate the comments. Like it's so light touch because people just don't spoil. They don't spoil because they're, they know they're spoiling themselves and their fellow Expanse fans and they wouldn't do it. And I just love that. I love the, I love the caliber of fans that this show is attracted so however popular this show ever becomes i hope we never lose that sense of community which i'll now include myself in because i'm caught up i know as much about this show as anyone else not books um and for those of you who say read the books i will read the books but my plan is to read them once the whole entire tv series concludes at whatever point in the future that happens i would like there to be something that I can then go to at that point when I'm gutted and devastated that I can live through at that point and I also don't want to be spoiled as a, as a TV reactor anyway so I'm not, I'm not going to read the books I'm going to wait until the book series is complete until the TV series is complete and then I'm going to sit down and read them and who knows at that point we may well do a book club on Patreon anyway yeah I feel kind of emotional I really wish we had more episodes of this show to go I don't want to wait around for another season but we will be very very busy there will be a lot going on with the channel um there are only a few episodes of handmaid's tale to do so that's really only a matter of a few weeks and then we're gonna pick up another major show that will go alongside battlestar galactica you'll get a poll out about that shortly 
I don't know what else to say. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for your comments, your kindness, um, your reflections, the sh things that you shared about the way that the show's impacted you. I just, I've loved it. I've loved every minute of it. And I cannot wait to pick up with you in season five. Until the next time, bye bye. Thank you for being a friend.